There we go. We welcome you to worship this day, uh, this snowy morning. Uh, today, in the second Sunday in Lent, we, one of the stories, especially in the Gospel, we hear how Peter, how things changed so quickly from him. One moment he was called, uh, naming Jesus the Messiah, and the next moment Jesus was saying, get behind me, Satan, and kind of think about that with the weather that we're having outside. One week it's 40-some degrees, and the next morning we got snowstorm, and then maybe 70 degrees this week. So we know that things can change, and that's the hope that we will receive this day uh, when we hear God's promise that he has for you. We have uh, this afternoon is our joint council retreat. Hopefully everyone who is involved in that uh, will be able to make it. We are uh, get the good joy of using the Morton Center today to have plenty of space between us as we make plans for our church for this year. Already things are starting to change and we look forward to the other changes that are about to happen for us this year. Out in the narthex, you can see a box that maybe you've already signed up for a free heart screening from the Faith Community Nursing Program. Yeah, this week, Wednesday and Thursday, the quilters are going to be at East Nidaros. And a reminder that this week's Lenten services will be here at Baldick at 6 o'clock. Once again, no meals with this, but uh, great to see we had, we had people turn out for uh, Lenten services this week. We are starting our uh, First Communion classes. I've texted and emailed those parents of fifth graders and older who maybe haven't had uh, First Communion training yet, and I would like you to be able to extend that invitation out to anybody listening today or those that you might know that have not had First Communion training. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do with these uh, young people to teach them what happens in this wonderful sacrament of another promise that he gives to us. And our first meeting is going to be next Sunday, meeting at 4 o'clock uh, in the afternoon here at Baltic, and then the following week we finish up with the training on March 14th at 4 o'clock as well, and our plan is to that they'll receive their first communion on Palm Sunday this year. It's hard to, I've done it in just about every, every different Sunday that there is. Um, but it'd be great for them to have it on Palm Sunday, so if they travel somewhere for Easter, uh, they would be welcome to the Lord's table to receive that sacrament on Easter morning. Birthdays this week. I couldn't hardly believe it when I looked at the birthday list because I thought Ordell Craxton's birthday was just there, but it was a year ago that we celebrated his birthday up at the Dells Nursing Rehab Center, and here he is a year later, again at home, but... Uh, so Ordell is having a birthday this week. Lyle Broberg, Ann Aberson, Julie Berndt, Michelle Dirksen, Taryn Sunderman, and Bernetta Romsdahl all have birthdays this week. And I believe there's an anniversary this week for Nathan and Emily Vercota. So if you see any of those people, give them your best wishes. And just learning this morning, uh, congratulations, to, of course, to parents, Casey and Bridget Hartman, but also to grandparents, uh, Trudy, um, as well this morning on the birth of their granddaughter, Lola True Hartman. So, uh, just happening this morning, and we're always happy to share good news that is happening in our parish. With that, those are the announcements that I have for you this morning. If there aren't any others from you this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as our worship begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join as we sing our opening hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And today we are going to sing the Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For, give me my, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. 
of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please join as we pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Eternal God, it is your glory always to have mercy. Bring back all who have erred and strayed from your ways. Lead them again to embrace in faith the truth of your word and to hold it fast. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. First lesson is from Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and 15 and 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you, you shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will read in unison from Psalm 22. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him, for kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Second lesson is from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, 
in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's sing a verse of Jesus Loves Me as the children come forward for a children's message. Thank you for coming up. Did you hear some names in that first lesson? Abraham and Sarah? Did you, have you learned about them in Sunday school at all? Okay. These are important names that we need to know from the Bible. And we, hear one of, we heard one of the stories today about Abraham and Sarah. Did you hear how old they were? Yes, exactly. Abraham was 99 years old. And you know what happened when he turned 99? He started to be a dad. Yeah, that's what we... <laughs> that was pretty, but not even just a dad. So let's look at this picture that's going to come up on the screen here. What do you think that is? What does it look like? Stars, yep. Uh, how many can you count? See if you can count them. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do it, isn't it? We probably could. If we took time, then I wouldn't have... No, we won't eliminate the sermon because we're counting stars. But we could count... It almost seems like we could count them, but that's how many children they said Abraham would have. You don't have that many brothers or sisters, do you? No, of course not. He even went on to say that he would, they, he would have descendants like the sand on the sea, and that would even be, I think that would even be harder to come. But we just have a little picture of some of the stars in the sky. But that's a huge blessing that the Lord gave to Abraham and Sarah. He said, your descendants are going to be as great as that. If you look up there, I think you're one of those stars. Because he said, from you are going to come all of the descendants. And not only am I giving the promise to you, he's giving it to every one of you. So why don't you look up there and pick out a star that might be you. Got it? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you continue to give us blessings. The same blessing that you gave to Abraham. Help us when we fail to trust in this promise and the blessings that you give to us. But we know that when we do, you are right there to give this promise to us once again so that we will soon believe. And all this we pray in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Thank you for coming up. And I invite the rest of you to stand for the Lenten verse.
return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. for this second Sunday in Lent is according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to give, to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God the Father and from his Son, Lord Jesus, our Savior and King. Amen. There are many stories, especially found in Genesis, about the faith of the great patriarch Abraham. His faith is also referenced in many places in the New Testament, as you heard from Paul today from, in the second lesson from Romans. The writer of Hebrews also declares the faithfulness of Abraham. Peter is the main disciple in the Gospel reading for today, and his stories, too, are found on many other pages in the New Testament. However, today we only get a small snapshot of each of these biblical characters in their brief stories that we heard today. As I read the second lesson from Romans earlier this week, as I started preparing for the message for today, and specifically these words when Paul said about Abraham, he did not waver concerning the promise of God, but grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. When I heard those words, I was reminded of some of the funeral sermons that I've listened to over the years, when I wondered if the preacher was actually referring to the same person that I knew. When I read these words, I wondered who Paul was really talking about when he wrote, he did not waver in unbelief at God's promise. I doubted if he was really talking about Abraham, because we are familiar with the other Abraham stories when He wasn't being so faithful. And that's what I mean by when I've heard some funeral sermons when the pastor has praised the deceased for all their good works in their life, and then maybe others are even invited to come up to the microphone to express good things that they remembered. While some of us sitting in the pews know other stories about these people which really don't line up with what is being said at the funeral. But nobody is stepping up to the microphone to praise Peter as we hear in the gospel for today. Not only is he not getting praised, he is given the name of Satan by Jesus and he is told to get behind Jesus. That sounds much different when Jesus first called Peter and told him to follow me. But again we are reminded that this is just one of the stories about Peter in the Bible. In fact, Peter's greatest moment in Scripture had just taken place before this reading that we had today. 
And I really regret that I hadn't asked Jody to include even more of Peter's stories in the bulletin for you today. You only have to back up two verses to hear Jesus commend Peter for his confession that Jesus was the Messiah. But it only took a short time for Peter's fame and faith to fade quickly. Abram's faith, on the other hand, took many years to reach a point that Paul would one day record in Romans, Abram's faith did not waver in unbelief at God's promise. And maybe it's my sinful nature rearing its head to remember when Abraham and Peter were not demonstrating faithfulness to God rather than the times that they did, just like we often do when we think about people we know. The first lesson for today takes place later in the life of Abraham. We learn in this lesson that he was 99 years old when God was speaking to him at this time and giving him the promise that he would become exceedingly numerous like the stars in the sky. He would become an ancestor of many nations. He would give him the ability to be exceedingly fruitful at his old age. And from his descendants, even kings would be born. But this was not the first time that Abram had heard this promise. Abraham was 24 years younger when the Lord first spoke to him about becoming the father of many nations. Abram even had a different name when God first delivered the same promise. His name was Abram at that time. And even though Abram was 75 and not 99 at this time, the idea of having so many children was literally inconceivable. Even if, it was, even if it wasn't hard enough for Abram to believe that he would start fathering children at his old age, Sarai, his wife in her old age, also laughed at this idea. Even when the Lord took Abram directly to out of the house one evening and told him to look up at the sky and try to count the stars because that's how numerous his offspring would be, Abram at that time indeed wavered in his faith. It was then that Abram and Sarai conceived their own plan to become parents by giving Sarai's servant Hagar to her to bear them a son named Ishmael. Abram did waver in his faith on other occasions in his life. That is until you hear the story that you heard today when he was 99 years old. Abram and Sarai's laughing stopped when the promise was given to the, by the Lord again when he changed their names to Abraham and Sarah. Abram did not waver when he heard the Lord speak again and bless Sarah and said that kings of people would come from her and from no one else. God's promise that he would bless Abraham and Sarah with a child named Isaac came true just like every promise that God delivers. As we turn to other stories of Peter, we know that the Lord had not given up on Peter, even though he called him Satan in the reading for today. The Lord's plan for Peter to be a disciple and even Peter's rebuking could not change what the Lord had promised for him. The Lord did for Peter just as he did for Abraham. He told him of the promise that he had for him again and again and again until unbelief was replaced with unwavering faith. As we heard in the second reading for today, the Apostle Paul said, it depends on faith. It depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. It takes faith not to be ashamed of Jesus when he says, that the plans Jesus has for you and your salvation doesn't make sense to us. Our reasoning will not make sense out of God's plans. It depends on faith. Jesus wasn't asking for Peter to make sense out of his plan for our salvation when he said that the Son of Man must undergo 
great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again? Peter was willing to recognize Jesus as a Savior, but he rejected and openly rebuked Jesus and his plan that this would happen through suffering and death. So either Peter had a different plan for what he thought Jesus should do instead of dying for us to save us, or else Peter had an idea of how he could help Jesus do this without suffering. But whatever was on the mind of Peter would not change the way God's promise of salvation would be delivered to you. On this second Sunday of Lent, we have now heard about two people, Abraham and Peter, who seem to be very different, to be in different places regarding their faith on this day. Abraham, who first questions God's promise, and after many years of hearing God's promise to him, reached a point when he no longer wavered at his unbelief. And then we also heard about Peter, who went from confessing Jesus as a Savior to rebuking him in a short period of time. So maybe it's good for you to know today that it doesn't matter if you think your faith is as strong as you heard Abraham's was in the story when we heard that he did not waver in unbelief, or if you think your faith is as absent as it was for Peter when Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. God is not done delivering his promises to you. God does not limit the number of times of repeating blessings to you any more than the times that he will be forgiving your sins. Yes, you too represent one of the stars that the Lord pointed to in the sky when he told Abraham that he and you would be blessed. You have received faith again today by hearing the unfailing promise that the Lord has for you. Amen. Please join as we sing the hymn of the day.
invite you now to stand as you are able as we confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we especially uh, bring to the prayers of Terry Tomerosen as yeah, he has returned to the hospital, and I visited with the kids yesterday, and uh, they're in definite need of the prayers f for Terry now. And then we'd also ask you to uh, pray for Kim's dad, Don Koopman. Uh, he took a tumble yesterday and broke his arm, and uh, so he, we had a short night last night. So if we mess up on a few things today, uh, please forgive us. <laughs> But uh, please include him in your prayers as well. And so, and all the other names that we continue to pray for. Let us turn to our Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. O Lord, in these Lenten days, set our minds on things of you rather than the things of man that we may deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow your Son through this life into the joys of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you have given your church the joy of proclaiming the truth while we were yet sinners, because Christ died for us so that we might be justified by his blood and saved from your wrath over our sins. Grant all pastors the gift of your spirit to preach and teach this truth boldly and faithfully and to help us confess it in word and deed in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, keep us from being ashamed of the Son of Man when we face persecution for his name in this world, that he may not be ashamed of us when he comes in your glory with the angels. Be near to all who are facing martyrdom for Christ and sustain them unto the end, that they may be crowned with life before you. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, since all kingship belongs to you and you rule over the nations, we pray that you would bless all who govern us in your stead and that we may be ruled wisely and in accord with your gracious world, will, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, through your Holy Spirit, pour out your love into the hearts of those who have been asked for to pray this day. We bring before you the names of Tanya Ballen, Vern Endall, David Carl, Terry Tomerasen, Eric Lindsay and Emily Comas, Rachel Aberson, Tom Simmonsma, Joanne Hamry, Rhoda Wold, Ordell Crogston, Ella Riswold, Paul Romstall, Amanda Nyhog, Don Koopman, Don Williams, Don Wallen, John Jurgensen, Daryl McMahon, Jerome Johnson, Jordan Alderman, Leroy Koopman, Fred Tiedemann, Mike Wustewald, Eugene Hawks, Javen Einan, Jessica Shaw, and the family of Inus Wilson, and all who suffer in our midst. We pray that their sufferings may produce endurance, and endurance which will produce character, and character a hope that will not put them to shame. Grant them health and healing according to your perfect will and sustain them in all their trials. 
Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, as we remember with thanksgiving the multitude of nations that rejoice in heaven before you with their father Abraham, we pray that you would sustain us in that same justifying faith that as his offering may share in the everlasting covenant you have made with him. Lord, in your mercy. And now all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And let's give a sign of God's peace to each other this morning. And to, we welcome those signs of peace and words of peace from those joining us online today. And as we give thanks for the offerings that we've received this week and those we'll receive this day, we sing, Create in Me a Clean Heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. And together we pray, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. you to join along as we sing our sending hymn, O Savior, Precious Savior. Grace 
Go now in peace and serve your neighbor. Yes, we will. Thanks be to God.